Now that we have a decent understanding of how to figure out how many significant figures we're even dealing with, let's think about a situation where, where significant figures will or might become relevant. So let's say that I have a carpet here. And I, using a, maybe a meter stick, I'm able to measure the carpet to the nearest centimeter. And so I get the carpet as, on, to the nearest centimeter, I get it to being 1.69 meters. So this is this 9, obviously this is to the nearest centimeter. This 9 hundredths of a meter is the same thing as 9 centimeters. And let's say I'm able to measure the width here, the width here as 2.09. Meters. I use the same meter stick. And you were to ask me, Sal, what is the area of your carpet? And so, you know, I just do the straight up calculation. The area is just going to be the length times the width. So it would be 1.69 meters times 2.09 meters, 2.09 meters. And we could do this by hand, but let me just get the, the calculator out just to uh, make things move along a little bit faster. And so we have 1.69. 0.69 times 2.09, and that gives us 3.5321. So let me write that down. 3.5321. So let me write this in a new color. So this gives us 3.5321, and we have a meters times a meters, which gives us meter squared or square meters. And so I might very proudly tell you, hey, the area here is 3.5321 square meters. And the problem here is that it it when I give you this thing that has, you know, all of these numbers behind the decimal point and all of these what we now know to be significant figures, it implies that I had a really precise way of measuring of measuring the area. Well in reality, I only was able to measure the area to the nearest centimeter. So the way we would do this so that we don't so that I don't make it look like my measurement is more precise than it really is or this calculation that's derived from my measurements I make sure that it has no more significant figures than either of the numbers that I multiplied. So in this situation I have three significant figures here, three significant figures, and over here I have three significant figures, three significant figures. And so in general when you multiply or divide the significant figures in your product or uh, or or uh, the the product or the I always forget in your uh, there's the divisor there's the dividend the, and there's the quotient the quotient the the the, the numbers uh, the significant figures in your product or your quotient cannot be any more than the than the than the least number of significant digits in whatever you are using to come up with that product or quotient. So over here both of these have three significant figures, so I can only have three significant figures in my product. If one of these had if this had three significant figures and this had two significant figures, I could only have two significant figures in my product. So in order to be kind of legit here, I have to round this to three significant figures. So I have to round it to three significant figures, and I need to, so I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth here, and so this two will will round down. So we go. This gets us to 3.5, 3.53 meters squared, and now we're cool with the significant figures. Let's do another situation with division. Let's say that I'm let's say that I'm laying tiles down in my bathroom, and so the diagram will look very similar. And I measure, I measure, I measure the, I measure the width of my bathroom to be, well, let's say it is 10. I'll do it in feet now. So let's say it is 10.1, 10.1 feet. And this is the precision that I'm able to measure it with. So I'm able to measure it to the nearest tenth of a foot. And let's say that the length of my floor, the length of uh, my floor is. Let's say the length of my floor, I'll just make up a number, is 12 point, and so for whatever reason, I was able to measure this with slightly higher precision, so 12.07 feet. And let's say, let's say that I have tiles. I have tiles, and the tile has an area, so someone else measured it for me. It has an area of, let's say that the area of this tile is 1.07 
feet squared. And this was just measured for me. And what I want to do is I want to figure out how many tiles can fit on this bathroom floor. So what I would do is I would figure out the area of this bathroom floor and then divide by the area of the tiles. And so the area of the bathroom floor, so floor area, floor area is going to be equal to 10.1, 10.1 feet times 12.07 feet. And so that will give us, that will give us, let's calculate it, it is 10.1 1 times 12.07 feet. So it gives 121.907. 121.907. So this is equal to, let me scroll over a little bit to the right. This is equal to, I can do a little bit more to the right. This is equal to 121.907 feet squared, or square feet. Now, we're not done with our calculation, but there might be a temptation right here to say, look, I had four significant figures over here. I have three significant figures over here. There would be a temptation to say, look, my area should not have more than three significant figures. And that temptation would be OK if this is all you were looking for, if the final answer you were looking for was the area of the floor. But we're not done with our calculation. We want to figure out how many of these tiles will fit into this area. And so the general rule of thumb, because you don't want to lose information, the general rule of thumb is don't round to significant figures until you are done with your calculation. Until you are done, especially if you're just doing a, mul a bunch of multiplying and dividing. Because otherwise, if you round here, you actually will introduce more error into your calculation than you'd want to. So what you do is you keep it as kind of the full number. Now you do the division. So let's do the division. So the tiles, the tiles per floor. The tiles per, I guess we could say my bathroom, or tiles in the bathroom, tiles fitting in bathroom, in the floor of this bathroom. It would be the area of the bathroom, so 121.907 feet squared, divided by the area of the tile, divided by 1.07 feet squared. And once again, let me get the calculator out. And so we have. 121.907 divided by 1.07. And you get this crazy thing with all of these digits. But this is going to be our final answer. So here we do care about significant figures. So tiles fitting in the bathroom, we get something that actually just keeps going. So it's, let me write this in a new color. We get 113.931775. Five seven zero one, and it actually just keeps going feet squared. And since this is the final answer, we care about how many tiles will fit onto this bathroom floor. Now the significant figures come into play. And the way to think about this is I have four significant figures over here. I have two significant figures over here. I have three significant figures over here. And since we did just a bunch of multiplying and dividing, and in general, well, since we did a bunch of multiplying and dividing, we have to have the minimum, whatever is the minimum significant figures of the things that we computed with, that's how many significant figures we can have in our final answer. Oh, and let me make this clear. This isn't two significant figures. This is three, the 1, the 0, and the 1. So our final answer can only have three significant figures. Three significant figures. So we need to round to the nearest foot. The next, the next digit over is a 9, so we're going to round up. So we're going to round up. So this will get us to 114. Actually, the units here aren't in square feet. This is in tiles. This is feet divided by feet. And so this is going to be 114. 114 tiles. Obviously, it's not going to be exactly 114 tiles. But based on the precision of the measurements we've done, we can say 114 tiles. Now, what I've just showed you right here is when we multiply and divide uh, measurements that have a certain number of significant figures, the general rule of thumb is whatever is the, you know, the minimum number of significant figures in any of the numbers are calculated, that's how many significant figures, or I guess the least number is the number of significant figures in your final quotient or product or answer. When you do addition and subtraction, it's a little bit different, and we'll cover that in the next video.